Millions of tons of glass are produced every year around the world, making it one of the most widely used man-made materials on the planet. But did you know that glass is made from sand? That's right. And today we are going inside one of the largest glass factories in the world to discover how this fascinating process takes place. Have you ever wondered how glass was first discovered? You might be surprised to learn that it happened entirely by accident. Picture a group of people in ancient Egypt, around 3,000 years before Christ, gathered around a campfire in the desert sand. Without knowing it, they were about to create something revolutionary. The sand, rich in silica, mixed with sodium carbonate present in the ashes of the fire. The intense heat caused these elements to melt, forming a shiny, hard substance. Glass. At that moment, they had no idea they had discovered a material that would transform the world. At first, glass was a luxury item. It was used to create jewellery, amulets and small decorative objects. It wasn't easy to produce and the pieces often had imperfections. It wasn't until the late 19th century that artisans began to perfect the art of making clearer and more uniform glass. But manufacturing it remained a slow, expensive and complicated process that required massive furnaces and flat surfaces to shape the molten material. Everything changed in 1959 when British engineer Alistair Pilkington revolutionised the industry with the float glass process. This method allowed flat glass to be produced continuously by having the molten material float on a layer of liquid tin. The result was smooth, transparent and much more affordable glass. Thanks to this innovation, today we can produce glass on a large scale with a level of quality that ancient Egyptians could never have imagined. But what does the process look like inside a modern glass factory? Before glass can reach our hands, massive amounts of its key ingredient, sand, must be obtained. Not all sand is the same. While sand is found everywhere, only a very specific type is suitable for making glass. Silica sand, which contains a high percentage of silicon dioxide, is the star of this process. This sand must be pure, with very few impurities, to ensure that the glass is clear and strong. In places like Brazil, silica sand is found in underground deposits, trapped in hard rock hundreds of metres below the surface. Extracting it is no easy task. The process begins with deep drilling, up to 11 metres down, where carefully designed explosives are placed. A mixture of ammonium nitrate and fuel, combined with a more powerful explosive, is used to break the rock and release the sand. When everything is ready, the blasting team gives the signal and a controlled explosion shakes the ground, exposing tons of sand. Once the dust settles, excavators and haul trucks go to work. These machines, operating day and night, collect thousands of tons of sand in just a few hours. The sand is then transported to a processing plant where its transformation begins. But before it can be turned into glass, it must undergo a rigorous cleaning process. The sand that arrives at the processing plant is not ready for use right away. It is full of impurities like clay, dirt and organic material that could ruin the glass. To purify it, the sand is moved to large washing tanks where it is mixed with hot water. This process is essentially a deep bath for the sand. The water and agitation separate out unwanted particles, leaving behind only pure silica. After washing, the sand moves into giant dryers operating at high temperatures. Here, any remaining moisture or impurities are removed. The result is dry, clean sand, ready to be packed into one-ton sacks that are then shipped to glass factories. A single factory in the United States can receive more than 5,000 tons of silica sand every week, enough to fill an entire stadium. And now we arrive at the heart of the process, the glass factory. Here. Silica sand is combined with other key ingredients to create the material we know. In addition to sand, soda ash and limestone are added. These compounds act like kitchen helpers that make the recipe work. Soda ash lowers the melting point of the silica, making it easier to melt, while limestone strengthens the glass so it doesn't break easily. Another important ingredient is recycled glass, which is added to the mixture. This material not only speeds up the melting process, but also saves energy and reduces environmental impact. Depending on the type of glass being produced, pigments may also be added. For example, 
Cobalt oxide gives glass the distinctive blue tint seen in certain bottles and decorative pieces. Iron oxide produces a green tint, while chromium oxide creates a deeper green. And ruby red glass is made with tiny particles of gold. All of these ingredients are mixed in a massive machine that ensures everything is perfectly combined. It's like a giant mixer, but instead of blending cake batter, it's mixing tons of sand and chemicals. Once the mixture is ready, it is transferred to a furnace that reaches temperatures of up to 1,650 degrees Celsius, hotter than volcanic lava. Inside the factory, the environment is intense. Workers wear fireproof suits and Kevlar gloves to protect themselves from the extreme heat. The furnace, the heart of the operation, is designed to withstand these incredibly high temperatures. The mixture of sand and other materials is loaded into crucibles, which are like giant pots built to handle the heat. Each crucible can hold up to 270 kilos of molten glass, and in a large factory, up to 12 crucibles can operate at the same time, each producing a different color or type of glass. The melting process is not instant. For 24 hours, operators stir the mixture with long metal tools to make sure no air bubbles remain. These bubbles, though they may seem harmless, can weaken the glass or make it less transparent. It is a task that requires patience and precision, because a single mistake can ruin an entire batch. After hours of intense heat, the mixture stops looking like sand and turns into a shiny, viscous mass liquid glass. This material is kept molten for several more hours to remove any trapped gases, ensuring the final product is as pure as possible. When it is ready, the workers must act quickly. The molten glass is removed from the crucibles with metal ladles, and at this point, a race against time begins. Molten glass is like a living liquid. If it cools too quickly or unevenly, it can crack or develop defects. That's why workers keep the material in constant motion. The metal ladles, which range in size from those carrying 2 kilos to those holding 18, are cooled between each use to prevent the glass from sticking. A high level of skill is required to handle these tools, as the material being worked is over 1000 degrees Celsius. At the mixing table, operators take portions of molten glass and work them with steel tools, such as forks, to create patterns or combine colours. This step is like creating a work of art. Every movement must be precise, because if the glass is mixed too much, the colours can lose their vibrancy. It takes experience and a trained eye to achieve the perfect balance. Once the glass has the desired shape and colour, it passes through a roller machine that flattens it into an even sheet. This process is crucial for producing smooth, flawless glass. Operators carefully inspect each sheet removing any air bubbles that may have formed. Then the sheet is transferred to an annealing oven where it cools slowly to prevent cracking. This step may seem simple, but it is essential to ensure the glass is strong and durable. When the glass comes out of the annealing oven, it is hardened but still hot to the touch and has sharp edges. In the cutting room, workers, protected by heavy gloves and durable clothing, Use cutters with tungsten carbide tips to score the surface of the glass. Then, with a precise motion, they break the sheets into standard sizes. This process requires coordination between two people, as the glass is both heavy and fragile. Interestingly, the largest glass sheet ever produced measures 3.3 meters wide by 20 meters long. It was made in 2023 by a factory in China for an architectural project setting a Guinness world record. Back in the factories, each crucible can produce about 25 glass sheets every 24 hours, meaning a single furnace can generate up to 300 sheets per day. Glass scraps are not wasted. They are collected and saved to be melted down in future batches, making the process more sustainable. Finally, the glass sheets are packed in wooden crates, ready to be shipped to factories, construction companies, and artists around the world. From a window in a skyscraper to a decorative piece in your home, each sheet carries with it a process that combines science, technology, and a touch of art. Beyond its industrial use, glass can also be a true work of art, and there is no better example than Murano glass, originating from a small island in Venice, Italy. Known for its beauty, exclusivity, and tradition, this glass is among the most expensive in the world. Each piece, 
whether a vase or a sculpture, is handmade by master glassmakers who perfect their craft over decades. Since the 13th century, Murano has been the birthplace of an art form that combines the highest quality materials, such as pure silica and precious metals, with unique techniques like glass blowing, millefiori, and gold inclusions. Each piece is created in family-run workshops, shaped with precision while the glass is still red-hot and cooled slowly to avoid fractures. The result is not just a decorative object, but a piece rich in history, tradition, and prestige. Its high price reflects not only the complexity of the process, but also centuries of closely guarded secrets, limited production, and the constant demand from collectors and museums who see in these pieces not just glass, but pure art. And that is how glass is produced on a massive scale. So tell me, what did you think of the process? I'll be reading your comments. If you enjoyed the video, click the like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. In the screens you'll see next, there are more videos you might enjoy. Go ahead and check one out. See you next time.